I've been listening to Silence. I'm Professor Adam Bradley, and I'm across the street from campus at Albums on the Hill, surrounded by a lifetime's worth of listening. There's so many songs we could be hearing right now, and if you want to find just the right one for you, all you have to do is ask my friend Andy. He's owned the shop for nearly 30 years and knows just about everything there is to know about music. You know, silence, though, has an important place. Silence may be the thing that we misunderstand. It's the thing that actually helps define the space of the sound. So much sound comes at us when we're in college. There's the sound of professors lecturing, the sounds of our debates and discussions. And all of this is essential. But there's another space, the spaces in between, where rumination, contemplation occur, where ideas can become your own. This is the power of silence. Now, musicians understand this implicitly. The great Miles Davis, jazz trumpeter, said of music that, in music, silence is more important than sound. There's a power in the spaces around the notes. I didn't really come to understand this until I was in college myself. My first year, I was in an English class studying Shakespeare's Henry V. And there's a moment when it cuts away to a battle. And instead of going all Game of Thrones with sound and fury and all of that, what you get is the battle actually off stage, off the page. You're left to deal with the repercussions. You're left to use your mind to fill in the spaces in between. Shakespeare understood, as Miles Davis later would, that silence, too, has a way of speaking to us. And we have a way of listening. And we do this all the time with music. That's why I put a couple songs up online that we'll be able to listen to together to see exactly where the silence helps shape the sound, how it makes meaning, how it makes beauty together. When you go to campus this fall and you're taking your biology class, part of what you'll be doing is looking for say, particular evidence that come out of your experiments, but part of it will be looking for what isn't there, what you thought might be there. If you take a religious studies course, you're studying the face from across the globe, you're studying people who have come to terms with the ineffable, who have come to terms with the invisible and made meaning from it. In history classes, it's important to think about the voices you don't hear, the ones that have been lost to history. How do we bring those back? How do we re recuperate that sound? This is part of the mystery of education, part of what's so wonderful about becoming not just a student, but a thinker. And so I urge you on campus from time to time with all these new experiences coming your way, sometimes just turn the volume down, put on your noise canceling headphones, whatever it takes, and enjoy the silence, enjoy that space, enjoy it so that you can start taking possession of your own ideas, to know your own mind and, and to move forward with that kind of power. I hope I see you in class, and if not in class, maybe at least here at Albums.